Shalom Aleichem, my friends. The parasha of this coming Shabbat is Parashat Ekev. Of course, the beginning of the parasha is dealing with the famous verse, Vehaya Ekev Tishmeun, which of course has been explained by our sages as brought in Rashi, that the the demand here is which means and it will be because of your listening to these ordinances and so forth. Let me explain it my way. Ekev is the lower part of the body that upon which we st we stand. So our sages explain that this refers to the commandments that in fact do not have much importance in the eyes of many people. Those that we call the light commandments. That it's possible that people might belittle them to the point of not of not paying attention to them. So the Torah says that God wants all the commandments to be, all the 613 commandments to be kept. And therefore we have to be very careful also to keep the commandments that apparently have no importance in our eyes, in our eyes only, of course, that have apparently they have no importance, that you might belittle them and not practice them. You should pay attention to them. And if you do so, that God is going to give you all the blessings and all the things that you deserve. As the Torah go on. Nevertheless, this is not the subject of today, because I would like to speak about one of the verses that are extremely important, that are found in our parasha, in this parasha. And that is... Ve'ata Yisrael ma Hashem elokecha sho'el me'imach. And now Israel, what is it that Hashem, your God, is asking of you? Ki im le'ira. Only one thing. To fear Him. To fear Hashem, your God. And then the verse goes on. Lalechet bechol derachav to go in all his ways. And to love him. And to serve Hashem your God with all your heart and soul, with all your soul. And it goes on. Next verse. To keep the commandments of Hashem and his statutes which I command you today, let of lach, for your benefit. Now, what does it mean here? What I, what I am going to bring to you, my friends, is a question that I had in my mind, that many people have in their minds, to explain the meaning of this verse. It does not make sense. Because there are several questions that we can ask regarding this extraordinary verse. Let me begin. Everything I will say will be based upon the commentary of the great Netziv, that's the acronym for Naftali Tzvi Yehuda Berlin. He was a great Rosh Hashiva in, in Lublin. He lived approximately 150 years ago, and he gave us the famed commentary that we know that we know as the Ha'amek Davar. A great commentary. I heard someone saying that if one will deal with that uh, commentary of his, from the beginning of the Torah till the end, if he learns very well the explanation of the, of the netziv, of the Torah, he will become a Talmud Chacham. You will become a Torah scholar. Amazing. But indeed, it's not easy, of course, but it's quite deep. But nevertheless, it's worth it to learn it. 
So what does he say about this? First, he's asking the questions that I had in mind, and that is, let's, what's going on here? First, the Torah says that God is asking, and now my dear people Israel, all I'm asking you to do is to do something simple, to fear Hashem, to fear God, your God. As though to fear is something small. We'll discuss this. To walk on his ways. That's not easy. That means to be like him, like the way he behaves. The Talmud tells us all kinds of examples, such as, as he is compassionate, you have to be compassionate. As he, he does, uh, for example, uh, he goes to visit the sick, you have to go and visit the sick, and many, many other things doesn't seem to be very easy, right? And he's saying, Kimlir, and number one, the question number one is, you said that it's only to fear him. And now you go on and asking more demands that, that seem to be difficult for at least the large part of the population of the Jewish people. And he, what is the other demand? What is the other commandment? To love him, to love God. That's not easy. Of course, if you ask anybody, do you love God? He will say, of course I love God. Like when you say to him, do you fear God? He says, of course I fear God. But do they know? Does everyone know the meaning of fearing God? Let alone, do they know the meaning of loving God? How do you love God? Like the Talmud asks, is it possible to, to hug Hashem? Or to love Him? How do we love Him? There is only one way that we can say about that. But that way does not pertain to everyone. It pertains only to the Torah scholars. Those who delve into the Torah day and night. From the beginning of the day till the night and more. These people, yes, they know the meaning of Yirat Hashem. The fear of Hashem. And they know the meaning of how to love God. To love God is by being strict in every one of the commandments. You see them, for example, when they go to buy an etrog before Sukkot, they check every particle in it, every single detail that they should not miss anything. When it comes to the laws of Shabbat, then they know all the laws, but it's not everyone knows the laws of Shabbat. For that, you have to consecrate your life to learn the laws of Shabbat, which are so many. So if you are not into learning Torah, how can you fulfill the mitzvah of loving God? Loving God means that you have to be very strict with every single commandment that he gave. But that requires scholarship, it requires tremendous knowledge of Torah. The more knowledge you have, the more strict you become. I'll tell you something. It says, everybody knows that the Talmud is replete with the great debates between Beth Hillel and Beth Shammai. And we know that the law goes according to Beth Hillel. As the Talmud says in Masachet Aruvin, Yatsa bat kol ve'amra, there was a heavenly voice that came out and said, the law will always go according to Beth Hillel. Very good. So what do we do with Beth Shammai? Apparently, their opinion is not kept anymore, right? Even in the very beginning, only very few went according to the law of Beit Shammai. One of them was Rabbi Tarfon, as the Talmud says in Masechet Berachot. But in fact, the law goes according to Beit Hillel. The, the reason behind that are because the, the opinion of Beit Hillel is easier for the Jewish people. Beit Shammai are stricter. So now, what's now the question that I always ask, if that's the case, how come if you check into Maimonides, the Rambam, the, the big, the gigantic book of, of Rambam, which tells us the laws, you don't see anything that pertains to the laws according to Beit Shammai. He tells us the laws as we have to do, which is according to Beit Hillel. If that's the case, how come we learn every day, almost every day, the debates between Beit Hillel and Beit Shammai, and we give the same importance to the opinion of Beit Hillel, and we give so much learning into it to understand it, and also the same way we do with Beit Shammai, apparently. Why? That's why in the book of uh, the fathers, Pirkei Avot, it says, Ezoi machloket l'shem shamayim, 
שסופה להתקיים. I mean the debate that will always become everlasting, forever it will be on. And our sages say in Pirkei Avot, that's the debate between Bet Hillel and Bet Shammai. This will last till the end of time. Now it's not very easy to understand that because we don't go according to Bet Shammai. So how is it going to last? And why is it again to the question that I said, why should we learn it and devote so much of our understanding into learning the laws of, I mean, the opinions of Bechamai? The answer is because the laws of Bechamai, I mean, the, 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 the mind of Bechamai is Torah. And we are under the obligation to learn every, every way of the Torah. Uh, what about the fact that we don't go according to the, the, to, to the, the opinion of Bet Shammai? Don't worry. The Ritba, Allah Shalom, says, one of the great Rishonim, he says, at the end of time, when the Mashiach will come, we will go according, we will follow the laws of the Torah according to the opinion of Bet Shammai, according to the understanding of Bet Shammai. What happened? How is it possible? Why? We abandon Bet Hillel? No, it does not mean that we are going to abandon Bet Hillel. It means that the laws of Bet Shammai are going to be more feasible for us because we will be on a higher level than usual. So automatically, we will go according to the stricter views of Bet Shammai. Understand this. Now, let's go back to our discussion. So now, when, it, when the Torah demands, when Hashem himself is requiring from the Jewish people to go according to his ways, to love him, to love him. It's not, that's the first commandment of everything that we read in, uh, in the reading of Shema. Even Rabbi Akiva, before he died, he, he wanted to be an example to fulfill this commandment and he did it only the last minute of his life when he said to his disciples, when he was about to be executed, to, to die his atrocious death by the Romans, he said, finally, I have the possibility to fulfill this commandment properly, with all my heart and all my soul, that even if they take my soul. Now we understand that this commandment refers to great people to do it properly. But let's leave that aside for a minute. The next demand in the same verse, and to serve God with all your heart and all your soul. And so forth. And the last question, as we said before, so that you will have a benefit. Let tov lach. Does not make sense. But we shall see everything. Before that, so now you understand the question. The question is, how is it possible that God is asking so much from all the Jewish people? But there are several categories among the Jewish people. There are four categories among the Jewish people. There are those that are the leaders of the Jewish people, the president of the synagogue, or the gabaim, or the people who take care of the needs of the Jewish people, right? That's one part, one example. There is a second category of the Jewish people, that's the Torah scholars. The wise, the wisest people, those who learn Torah. Then you have the third category of the Jewish people, which is which which makes up the most of the population of the Jewish population, the people who go to work, and they they they, they don't have the time so much to learn any Torah and to spend the whole day in Torah is not for them. They have a family to feed and so forth. And finally, the fourth category is the women and children. Women and children are not under the obligation of, 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 of doing all the commandments. And here it says, it, it, this verse apparently is talking to all the Jewish people. Does not make sense. So therefore, the question is, how come God is asking, he begins the verse by saying, all I am asking you is to fear me. And then he goes on by demanding so many things that are difficult, depending, of course, on the level of people. 
de Midrash Shochertov, the native brought that, uh, in fact, David, King David, in the book of Tehillim, in chapter 27, is apparently doing the same thing as God is, is doing it in this verse. King David is saying to God, all I am asking is one thing to do. That's all I'm asking from you. And what is it? Shifti Bevet Hashem, I want to sit in the house of the Lord. Probably he meant he wants to sit in a yeshiva to learn Torah day and night. But he continues and he says, Lachazot ben Am Hashem, to gaze, to look at the, 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 the pleasure of looking at your Shekhinah, at your divine presence. Call Yemechayai all my life. Ah, that's asking too much. So the Midrash tells us in Shocher Tov. So God, so to speak, God spoke to him. And he said to him, David, David, what's, what's the matter with you? You started by saying, Achach Alti. I'm asking only once, one, one, one uh, plea, one thing. And you seem to be, to be asking me one thing and then to go on and you want also to see the great vision, the great look of the divine presence and in his sanctuary and to sit there all, yemechaye, all your life. You're asking everything. And how come you start by saying I'm asking only one thing. So King David apparently said to Hashem, Hashem, I follow, I follow one rule. The servant must do what his master is doing. I mean, you did that already, he said to God. God, you did the same thing. You began by saying, How much? It's not much I'm asking from you. And then you kept on saying this and that, practically everything. There is nothing else to ask. So I'm doing the same as you did, as you said. You don't want the servant to be to emulate his master. I mean, you came also by saying one thing, right? And then you started to ask so many things. So that's what I did also. I did as a servant to you. I did what what your master what means you have have said have done. This was, by the way, because the Netziv Alav Shalom is asking several questions, having to do in order to clarify exactly the, the the real meaning of this verse that we have quoted. But first, we have to ask another question. The other question stems from what the Talmud says in Masechet Brachot on page thirty-three, and there it says. That when the, the Torah is saying, all I'm asking you is to fear Hashem. Is that, that means we understand on first understanding that to fear Hashem, to fear God, is not uh, difficult. So the Talmud is asking, the sages are asking, Why? You are asking only to fear you, but to fear you is easy? Is that a small thing? What was the answer of the Talmud? Yes, it is easy, but only for one person. For Moses, our master Moses who gave us the Torah, for him to fear God, but of course, for him it's not much to ask because he has seen you. He has seen the, the face of God. Panim befanim, the Torah says. He, he, have, he has seen God face to face. So of course he will fear him. For him it's an easy thing to do. That's one question. But why is this question not asked? Why is it that the Talmud did not ask about also the other commandment that is brought in this verse? Ul when it says that you should also love him. How come they don't, they don't ask the question, is it easy to love Hashem? And we have to explain what is the meaning of loving Hashem. 
as I have said, to love Hashem means to be strict on every commandment and all the, all the various parts and particles that there are in every commandment. You have to be a great Torah scholar to know. So only the Torah scholars will be able to love God the proper way. Because how do we love God? You cannot hug Him. You cannot hold Him. As the Talmud elsewhere uh, asks the question, can you, can you catch God? Can you hold Him? He is fire. Can you take fire and, and hug it? Only. So the Talmud says the best way to love Him is to go on His way, also, of course, to worship him properly and to be at to, to each minute detail to fulfill all the commandments. That every commandment should be kept according to the law and you have to know all the laws for that. So this cannot be required from people who, can, who don't have any other choice but working all day to bring food to their family or the other uh, categories of, of, of the Jewish people. As we have explained, there are four categories among the Jewish people. So to love God pertains to the Torah scholars because they are there. They, when you learn Torah all day, you cannot avoid loving God because you fall in love with the Torah, you fall in love with God. So it's an easy thing. That's why the, the Talmud did not ask, why is it a, a small thing to ask? Yes, it is small for, for, a, for a Torah scholar. But for the others, it is practically impossible unless if they just fulfill this commandment by saying, we love you, God, we love you. Do they know what is to love God? But it's okay. God has pleasure to hear that also. I heard this from uh, Rabbi Avigdor Miller, Shalom, the great Torah teacher that we had. So he said, at least when you wake up in the morning, Wake up and say, I love you, God. I mean, it's not much. It's not the real understanding of this mitzvah, Hashem elokecha, to love God. But at least it's something. But the Torah is more serious. It's not, uh, it's demanding to do that according to all the, the, the minute details that pertain to every single law that there is. So that were, those were the questions. Just one more question that the Netziv is asking. When it comes again regarding the law of loving the Almighty God. Now what is to love him? Means to fulfill the commandments without expecting any reward. As the book of the Father says, that you have to, be, have to be as a servant who serves his master out of love without expecting any reward. All right. But how come in the same verse that we have cited in our parasha, it says, so that God will give you a great benefit. If you do everything here that is being demanded from you, God will give you good things. And look at Rashi, that's what Rashi says also. God will return your love in, in, by his love, which means by giving you many things that benefit you. Ah, it means that this is, is this love? When you expect something, that's, that's not love. Love has absolutely no re remuneration. So that's another question. And therefore, we shall deal now with the answers as quickly as we can. We cannot take too much time from you. The point is that the Jewish people consist of four categories. How do we know that? We can read this very quickly in the last uh, parasha of the book of Devarim, or the one before the last, parashat Nitzavim. And the first verse there appears by saying, Atem Nitzavim ayom kulechem, you are all standing before me today. That's the day of Rosh Hashanah. Now it says, all of you. It should have been enough to say, Kulechem, all of you. But instead, the, the verse goes on and says, Rashechem, Shivtechem, your tribes, your, the heads of your people, Ziknechem, your elderly, or rather, the great Torah sages, the Torah leaders, Veshotrechem, and those who stand for the Jewish religion. They are known as the policemen of the Jewish people. 
ראשיכם, שבטיכם, זקניכם, שוטריכם, נשך כל איש ישראל, all the Jewish people. And then it says, תפכם נשכם, the little children, your wives. All right. But why do you have to say, why do you have to tell me the, every single category of the Jewish people? When the Torah could have said just, אתם ניצבים היום כולכם, all of you are standing before me, and that means all of you. Why do you have to tell me every single category? That means there are four categories. First, רשיכם שבטיכם, the heads of the, of the Jewish people. The heads of the Jewish people means people who take care of the Jewish people. A president of a synagogue, a gabai, to take care of the needs of the Jewish people. That city is so important that even if there is, at the same time that they are dealing with doing that, they have that time of a mitzvah, in certain circumstances they can give up doing the mitzvah, the commandment, and pursue their vocation to help the Jewish people and to help them. That's called tzorchet zibur, right? That's expected from the first category, the leaders of the Jewish people. Then the second category is the sages of the Jewish people, the Torah scholars of the Jewish people, the disciples and the students of Torah, those who sit down in Kolel and learn Torah day and night. That's the second category. The third category is Kol Ish Israel, all the Jewish people, means the, the, that part the, 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 the most uh, important part, of course, the majority of the Jewish people, which is not uh, very great scholars, they have to work. They go to work from the morning till night to bring food to the family. So their responsibility is to take care of that, okay? But then you have the fourth category, the little children and women. As you know, according to Halakha, uh, women are not... Uh, uh, they, uh, they are not uh, obligated by all the commandments. There is only one part of the commandment they have to do, and one part they don't have to do. Those are the four categories of the Jewish people. Now, according to this, we will see that there are four expectations, different expectations from the four categories of the Jewish people from this verse of our parasha that we have cited. So how, uh, this is how it goes. The truth is that God is asking from all the Jewish people one thing. Ki'im leira. Now we understand. I, I want you to do it to fear God. To fear God is to be at least religious. I mean, the fear of God also depends on the level of people. Now, fearing God, of course, a Torah scholar knows more about fearing God, so he does the most necessary thing about it, and he is expected to do so. But the rest of the people, they fear God by being religious, doing the commandments properly. A Jew who does not fulfill the commandment has no part in the law of uh, Yir At Hashem. He cannot say, I fear God without doing anything, without keeping Shabbat, without keeping the laws of Nida, without doing all the things that the Torah requires. No question about it. So we are talking about that part of the Jewish people, which consists of four categories, as we said, but they are all religious. Call each Israel. All of them are under the obligation to fulfill the mitzvot, only according, each one according to his ability and according to his, what is expected from, from him is to do whatever is necessary according to his understanding and his level. So now, when it comes to Yir'ah, fearing God is upon all the Jewish people, only as we have said, each one according to his ability, to his understanding. You ask a Jew, any Jew, do you fear God? He will tell you, of course I fear him. But does he know really what is the meaning of fearing God? All he knows is that he is a, a person who, who keeps the commandments according to his level, according to his understanding. But when it, whatever is expected from a Talmud Chacham, from a Torah scholar, is much more. Because he knows what is to fear God, so he does everything that is required from that. Now when it comes to the second commandment here, this we cannot expect a simple Jew to love God according to its exact meaning. You ask him, do you love God? He says, of course I love God. But he doesn't know what is the meaning of loving God. 
Loving God means that every commandment strictly done with all the minute details that pertain to that commandment and for that you have to be a Torah scholar to know what is necessary for each commandment. But the person who doesn't know much of the Torah, all he does is what, what he was taught by his parents to do. That's what he is, that's what he is expected to do, no more. If he, is, if he has the ability to do more, or if he has a greater understanding, he goes according to his understanding. That's what, grosso modo, what the Netziv is saying in his Pirush, in his commentary of uh, Ha'amigdabar. And especially that the Torah says here, Kol Ish Israel, in the, in the first verse in Parashat Nitzavim. Kol Ish Israel. Why do you have to tell me all the people of Israel when you said already Kul Lechem? It means that we have, sec- we have spoken about what is required for the Ziknechem Veshotrechem. And then Shiftechem, Rashechem, Shiftechem. And then Kol Ish Israel, whatever is expected from all the Jewish people at large. And then what is expected from the little children and the women, everybody, those four categories, take part, are associates in the building of the creation of the world as God wanted it. Which is, everyone does whatever he can according to his knowledge and according to his possibilities. All that is required really, as I always say, is that we came to this world to overcome that which we know is forbidden to do. That which you know is forbidden to do, yet you feel desire to do so, you have to do your best to overcome that. That is expected from everyone. That's the part that it says, Ki im Only go, all God is expecting from you is to fear Him. So now we understand what is to fear God. In reality, to fear God is to do the best you can. When you have the possibility, overcome. When you know, when it, when you know there is some a sin that is you are about to commit, then you restrain yourself. That is required from everyone according to his ability, from the rabbis and the Talmud Chachamim, the Torah scholars. Then we know that all these is required from them. No question about it to its strictest detail. Now, when it comes to the love, how come we did ask the question, how come the Talmud does not ask? But what about love? Loving God is also, is not easy, it's not something small to ask. So how come they ask only that about the fear of God? The answer is that the fear of God is something that goes with every one of us, everybody according to his ability. But the love of Hashem, when it comes to the Torah scholars, those who learn Torah every day, it's an easy thing for them to love God. Because when they learn, when you learn Torah all day, you fall in love with the Talmud. You fall in love with the pleasure that we derive when we study the glorious Torah that God gave us through the sages. And we fall in love with it. When you fall in love with the, with the saints of the Talmud, with the brain, with the geniuses of the Jewish people, then you fall in love with God. That's something easy. Therefore, we cannot say that only Moshe was able to see the commandment of fearing God easy. But when it comes to love, it's easy for the Torah scholars, exactly like Moshe has with all the commandments. But when it comes to the rest of the people of Israel, this cannot be demanded. No, Never God meant to ask from a Jew to do something that is much more than he is born to do, than for, for what he is born to do in this world. And that's a great message to my opinion. I would, this is so far, more or less, with some uh, few more additions, this was the commentary of the Ahmed Davar of the Netziv, Alava Shalom. All I would like to ask to conclude this uh, shi'ur is by bringing um, a story that is brought in the Talmud in uh, in Masechet Barachot on page 17. There it says, it's a famous story. When Rabbi Yochanan, who was the greatest Torah leader of his generation at the time, when he was about about to, to die, his disciples came to see him the last few days of his life, sick in his bed. So they came to visit him. So they heard him saying things They were perplexed. We don't have to tell you all the details. All you have to do is to look into the Gemara there. 
But then, when they saw the greatness of their teacher, they said to him, please, our master, give us a blessing. Of course, they thought that he's going to give them, to fill them up with all kinds of blessings that we all do, right? Instead, he said to them, to them, I wish you to have the fear of God, like you fear people. The reaction of the students, now, those students were not simple students. We were talking about great sages. But they were the disciples of Rabbi Yochanan. So they were a little bit, a little bit not exasperated, but they were disappointed. That's all? Atkan? It means, you mean that uh, our fear of God should be like the fear of people? Don't you think uh, that you give us, uh, you, you bless us with something that is below our level? Or we can explain always that uh, they meant to say that's all, uh, we, we wanted a bigger blessing than that. What was the answer of their teacher, Rabbi Yochanan? Halevai, I wish you to have that. That's all. What does this story teach us? It teach us. It teaches us what 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 I, what, what I kept saying this yet this day. That everything has to do with categories. That even those great disciples of Rabbi Yochanan did not know the proper, the deeper meaning of the fear of God. The commandment of fearing God has to do with the greatness of everyone. For, for a man like Rabbi Yochanan, it was really that the fear of God was like if he saw God in front of him. That's something else. But for his disciples, they thought that to, to fear, like you fear God. So Rabbi Yochanan said, I wish you to do that. What do you think? Whenever a person wants to, to commit a sin, first he sees if the, nobody is looking at him. That means he fears people more than God. And that's nature. So now he's, I wish you to have the same fear that you have from, from people, to have it also from God, for God. So they didn't know the meaning. But in fact, Rabbi Yochanan was correct. Indeed, yes. Most, if, if most people would fear the Almighty God like they fear people, that would be enough for God. So this teaches us that there are indeed different categories among the people who are religious and they keep the commandment, yet every commandment is kept, each one according to his level and his understanding. Let's hope that this shiur will be as a zechut, as a merit for all of us, for all the people of Israel, that may God have mercy upon his world, and may, may he have mercy upon his children in Israel, whatever they are, even the non-religious. Of course, we, we hope and pray that soon the, the, all the people of Israel will repent and will do the proper thing as expected from them, as he said also by, by the prophets that they will repent one day at the end of time. And we hope that everything will come and peace will come upon the earth, especially when uh, with the arrival of our Mashiach and the, 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 the deliverance of the Jewish people from the hatred of the nations and uh, all the lack of understanding each other. Shabbat Shalom, my friends.